Hi, I'm so glad to have you joining us in these lessons together. We are in Philippians. Now we're in chapter 4. Today we are going to look at verse 11. Now just as a precursor, an introduction to the next, at least maybe today and next couple days afterwards, Paul is dealing with uh, themes, concepts, topics, subjects that are incredibly relevant to our day. And, and I hope you hear and see in these lessons, uh, not, at least from me and certainly not in the scripture, not an anti-contemporary world message but a message that transcends circumstances and culture and, and history uh, of how the human heart works and how we can find and know true and lasting peace. And I really think we all clamor for and crave that true and lasting peace. So I hope you'd perk up here in the few minutes we get to have today and especially the next couple days. I think these are going to be, uh, if, if not subjects that are uh, uncomfortable in a good way, uh, hopefully the encouragements in them will be very relevant for each of us. Before we get into today's verse, uh, let's pray together. Lord, we ask you to speak, and, and I don't necessarily mean in an audible way, although I know you can, but sp speak in such a way that you prompt our lives to know and realize, savor your grace Toward us in Christ, Lord, to, to have us really trust you and live boldly and in a surrendered way, in dependence upon you, because, Lord, we know you are our hope and our joy, and you satisfy in a way that nothing in the creation ever can. Lord, speak to our hearts and minds, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Paul writes this, to the Philippians in Philippians 4.11. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Now this is on the heels of, if you recall the last lesson we had, Paul grateful for the, the generosity and the kindness of the Philippians to care for him, to, to invest in him, to support him. And here Paul is discussing contentment. Now, this is a common word, but I'm not sure that its meaning is common to us, or at least we have a very clear meaning of what it means to be content. I don't mean content. Content is, you know, you buy a, a box of cereal and the contents are what's inside. Contentment isn't a matter of so much what is on the inside. Uh, contentment very simply means to be satisfied. It means to be satisfied. Now, we're used to, you know, maybe a big meal. You know, we go out to dinner or we have a, a big holiday celebration like Thanksgiving or, or Easter coming up. And we sit down and, and we, we fill ourselves. We just stuff ourselves to the point of satisfaction. Now, the problem is our tummies tend to be overfilled because our taste, taste buds are never content. We tend to consume, whether it be food or shopping, getting items, goods, we tend to consume based upon taste rather than upon need. What nutrients does our body need and then we eat accordingly? What uh, care and comfort does our body need and then we shop accordingly? But we don't. We are driven by taste. Taste maybe being our physical taste buds or taste being, you know, there's a void and emptiness that we try to fill by shopping, you know, Amazon is, is such a dangerous example of that. Paul here is saying that in every situation, he understands being in need, but in every situation, he has learned to be content, to be satisfied. And satisfied in such a way that his, his ends are meet, or meet, met, not the means. In other words, it isn't the eating. It isn't the the intimacy with, you know, your husband or wife. It isn't the 
the affection you enjoy with your children. It isn't the the result, the sense of fulfillment and, and accomplishment we get through our work. Those are all means. And those means are never satisfied. But the end will be. And the end can be. And it can never be filled fully by anything that is earthly, that is in the creation. The only thing that can ever fully satisfy and grant us true contentment is Christ. Until we know Christ by faith, trusting in his grace through his death, burial, and resurrection, knowing that the payment that he made for our sin satisfies, until we know Jesus that way, we can never be content. We will never be satisfied. We can never go to church and worship enough. We can never read our Bible enough. We can never pray enough. Notice I'm saying that there are even religious things that we do that are means, and those means will never satisfy unless we know the end, the goal for which those are given. And the goal is to know Christ, to trust Christ, to enjoy Christ, to surrender to Christ, to be satisfied by, in, and through Christ. Paul understands that he might be impoverished or he might be at the banquet table of all the delicacies of the earth. And neither situation matters because he's learned to be satisfied and content in Christ so that whether he has little or a lot, he is content. Friends, we need to be freed from thinking and acting and living as if the, the things of this world were intended to fully satisfy. They are not, and they never were. We need to, be, need to learn to be content in Christ, through Christ, and by Christ alone. And that means having a relationship with him by faith. So call upon Christ and thereby be invited to a relationship whereby you will be made content and satisfied. Lord, be with you.